So, Anne, it's good to see you again and have the opportunity to talk about this paper that uh, we jointly worked on for a couple of years, so many years ago. I'm glad to be here, too. And I'm sorry Larry can't be with us yes. since he's a key part of it. I think a way to maybe, when I think back, a way to frame it or to think about that time is that what exciting times it was. Yes. So in the 70s, the mid-70s, cognitive science had emerged from such a hodgepodge of different fields, from philosophy to computer science, anthropology, psychology. But by the time we started writing this paper in the late 80s and the early 90s, then cognition was becoming more known. So we were all at University of Illinois mm -hmm. in the strategy group. There were a number of people in that group that were doing different projects. Mm -hmm. And we had colleagues in OB and in accounting, but also mm -hmm. we're connected with people at NYU and other places, not only in the US, but also in Great Britain. And yes. So that, that whole background meant that, to me, this is a paper about being it is about being pioneers yes. and about the possibilities of kind of expanding domain with this new theoretical mm -hmm. foundation. Yep. Yeah. And the three of us really did have this shared interest in change and right. strategic change. And through our previous work histories had this sort of experience of working with firms that were having a difficult time with change. Um, it's my own experience in healthcare consulting and in trying to get hospitals ready for cost containment in the U.S. in the mid-1980s and finding out that even though I had all my MBA strategy tools, they just had a really hard time grasping the types of things I was talking about and, and thinking about themselves uh, as, as competitors. And, as, and that really sort of puzzled me and it was a puzzle that I brought in to the program. Um, we also then chose to focus on uh, two railroads that Larry Stimpert was familiar with. Larry having worked for the Chicago and Northwestern and also being fil uh, familiar with the Chicago Rock Island um, and Pacific. Pacific, yes, Pacific Railroad. Um, and how the Chicago and Northwestern facing the same competitive threat of interstate trucking as at the Rock Island. Um, managed to reinvent itself and do quite well while the Rock Island act fell into bankruptcy after a 25-year period. So that was really kind of an interesting uh, setting and puzzle to apply our various questions. Um, so what do you think are the, the kind of theoretic mm -hmm. contributions of that paper? I think that the number one thing that came out of it for me was that cognition matters. Uh, as you'd mentioned earlier, there were all of these people playing around with the idea of cognition um, and its relationship to, to organizational action and strategic action more particularly. Uh, and here was hard evidence that, that yes, it really does make a difference in terms of when firms respond and to some extent how they respond. We went in thinking that perhaps the big cognitive difference would be a difference in timing of when organizations, when each railroad noticed the change in competition. And what we found was that they noticed it pretty much at the exact same time. They saw it, they noticed it. To some degree, they saw it as a problem. And so from the problem sensing perspective, there was very little difference but it was how they came to understand the implications of that, both for the firms themselves, for competition and how to compete, and the learning process and the pattern of that change over time that really came out as the key factor in explaining the differences between the Chicago and Northwestern and the Rock Island rail railroads where the Chicago and Northwestern over a period of 25 years went through this intricate process of better understanding how the change in competition fit with their idea of industry, with their idea of firms' activities, with their idea of what competition is and how best to respond, and eventually led to changes in strategy that really improved their position. The, Chicago, the Rock Island 
just said, yes, here's another form of external event that we have no control over that somebody else has to deal with. More particularly the government. Uh, particularly the government. Uh, and the only time they really changed their models, uh, their, their, their views of the world, was following a change in CEO. And the focus was really on a change of what we should do. Change in organizational activity, but that change in organizational activity didn't appear to be related at all to a change in the way they thought about their environment or their organization. I think I would say that another contribution to the paper, several contributions were really methodological. Mm -hmm. So one of the problems with cognition is that you are trying to use a phenomenon that you cannot access. Yeah. It's what's happening in somebody's head. And as we know ourselves, even knowing what we think, especially over time, we see it change, is not so easy. Mm -hmm. And at the time we were really talking about this, the various methods that were available seemed particularly inappropriate for strategy. Mm -hmm. So now we have some strategy relevant designs of experimentation, but then the kind of experimenting that was being done was with students in a psych class for a grade doing something. And that just seemed totally inappropriate for a field that was trying to understand what smart people, interested in complex problems, deep knowledge, consequential actions, what they were doing. And the other main area of methodology, perhaps, was in, was in a more ethnographic approach. But there again, the ethnography that was being done just seemed too complex, too far from the kind of people that we were interested in. So the development of cognitive mapping based on a philosopher and their kind of rationale for how arguments are made was really a contribution of the paper. Mm -hmm. And I think that we spent some time not only showing how it was done, but really giving examples. The evidence in that paper is really, yes. I think, pretty strong yes. about, about how the argument develops with mm -hmm. some real pictorial mm -hmm. help. I think the other thing that we did that's not so impressive, but still was hard <laughs> to do, is um, that it was a careful attention to a match sample. Yes. So we didn't just choose organizations that look like they might be heading in the two directions that we were that we were starting out. We can see in our evidence that in fact they were very close early yes. on. So then when you see the Chicago and Northwestern really change, yeah. it's more plausible. So that methodology I think is a real contribution. One of the things the method allowed us to do was to trace this very complex unlearning process really over a period of 25 years, that you really couldn't capture in any other way. Uh, by, by looking expressly at how people communicated what they were thinking. Uh, at the time they were thinking it, and tracing those changes over time, we found that, that it was much more complicated than just changing your mind about something. There was evidence of some experimentation with activities, with thoughts, things dropped into the maps, things dropped out of the maps, uh, and, and it was this process of, of unlearning what you had known and then figuring out what new knowledge you had to develop in order to be successful that really kind of, of stands out, both in terms of explaining perhaps why the Chicago and Northwestern did better and the lack of evidence of that going on in the Rock Island perhaps associated with the fact that even though they changed their strategy, it wasn't enough to save the organization. We both went on and, and with Larry to do mm -hmm. other work in this area, but rather than, and so did a lot of other people, yes. of course, but rather than go through that, I think it may be a good conclusion is to say how important learning continues to be. Yes. Continues to be a theme that the strategy field is really trying to understand, recognizing how complex and, and time consuming it is. Cognition is also continuing to be important, but it's interesting that that word has had more shifts. Yes. And so now perhaps a, a word that is used more often is framing. Mm -hmm. Another is the idea of sense making. Yes. Which is articulated or put it is, is, emerges when there is a surprise as there was for one firm and not for the other. Yeah. 
So that that cognition sphere is important, yes. but I, but you see it in more words. Yes. Certainly, though, change and improvement in position is a basic theme and strategy. So that's I think one of the reasons why this paper is continued to get some yes. attention. Absolutely.